as their objective. It's not peace. They, are, they know they are not become stronger and stronger, but they believe in you. You will become weaker and weaker. Most of what you read is made of lies. But speaking what you want, ain't it everybody's fault? You wake up in the morning when we rise. Can you imagine a protester in Hanoi, how far he'd get if he wanted to protest North Vietnam, sending troops into South Vietnam or into Laos or Cambodia? He'd end up in a jug. Have the authorities taken any action against you because of burning your card in Central Park in New York? None whatsoever. How do you feel about those who say that you're delaying the, the war, or continuing the war, that prolonging it with this kind of action? We want the war to stop, and we feel the best way for the war to stop is for the United States to get out of Vietnam. The moratorium probably militates against the possibility of getting a satisfactory negotiated settlement from Vietnam, from North Vietnam, because it encourages them not to negotiate. End the war! 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 Idiots, you know. What's your name, sir? Never mind my name. I'm from Hungary. I'm a freedom fighter. I'm a communist. Right. The bastards. The idiots. The anti-communists. You stupid idiots. I'm te I would shoot you all. I'd like the Russians will shoot you if they come. And half of you have no jobs. You're hanging around the Tudor Street, you demonstrators. You should be out working or do something in the hospitals. It's a disgrace what you are doing here against your own country. I'm ashamed for America, and I'm not an American. I'm a Hungarian. You have died in this war. The many people who died, people died since time immemorial. That's nothing new, people is dying for freedom. People has to die for their children, for their future, for a free America like you here now. You couldn't walk around in Peking. Because you are misled. Deep inside, I'm sure you're all very, very decent people. Would you want the best for humanity? But humanity is finished in the communist countries. You should be not shot, that's too good for you. Do you know what it means having communists go to Hungary, to Czechoslovakia, go to East? Don't laugh so idiotically on the back. Don't run away now. You should listen to that. Stupid idiots. The people here is fighting for freedom. Every coolie here is a hero. Every coolie, every Vietnamese should get a medal. Every American who works so fights here is a hero. You will realize when it's too late. The debate went on. The demonstrations went on. And every president of the United States during the 1960s had voiced his endorsement of the United States position. Today, the communists reach ruthlessly for domination over Southeast Asia and are trying to break our will to a foil the attempt. The, uh, the use which uh, the communists make of democracy, and then uh, when they seize power, the effectiveness with which they manage the police apparatus so that uh, dissent cannot arise and uh, so that the people can no longer express their will, the liquidation by gunfire of the opposition or by forcing them out of the country to be refugees, this uh, suggests the kind of uh, problem which we're going to have in uh, this decade. And uh, in my judgment, it's an extremely uh, difficult matter for the uh, free nations to deal with. But, uh, I must say that it a matter to which we must address all of our energy and all of our attention. This nation will keep its commitments from South Vietnam to West Berlin. Since I took office as president, no single question has occupied so much of my time and energy as the search for an end to the war in Vietnam. 
an end fair to the people of South Vietnam, fair to the people of North Vietnam, and fair to those others who would be affected by the outcome. Both in public and at the Paris talks, we've offered a number of proposals which would bring peace and provide self-determination. And we're ready to consider any other proposals that have the same objective. Many urge that if only we halted our bombing of the North, peace would follow. Nearly a year has passed since the bombing of the North was halted. Three months have passed since we began the process of troop replacement, sig signaling both our own genuine desire for a settlement and the increased readiness of the South Vietnamese to manage their own defense. As I announced on Tuesday, by December 15th, our troop strength in Vietnam will have been reduced by a minimum of 60,000 men. On September 2nd, 1969, North Vietnam's chief negotiator in Paris said that if the United States committed itself to the principle of totally withdrawing its forces from South Vietnam, and if it withdrew a significant number of troops, Hanoi would take this into account. I repeat here today what I said in my speech of May 14, that we are prepared to withdraw all of our forces from South Vietnam and the replacement of 60,000 troops is a significant step. The time has come for the other side to respond to these initiatives. The time has come for peace. We in the United States want to end this war, and we are ready to take every reasonable step to achieve that goal. But let there be no question on this one fundamental point. In good conscience, we cannot in the long-term interests of peace, we will not accept a settlement that would arbitrarily dictate the political future of South Vietnam and deny to the people of South Vietnam the basic right to determine their own future free of any outside interference. But the demonstrations and parades continued with a yell of, hell no, we won't go. In South Vietnam, there were other parades where cries of, hell no, we won't go, were non-existent. For without defense, their families and country would live no more. of 1969, candlelight parades marched down Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, and the freshly lit torch became one symbol to one group in one land, and it became another symbol to another group in another land.
The flames were still bright on December the 31st, 1969. Whether that fire would be a permanent light of freedom or would be extinguished was not to be known within the decade. The United States had given lives and treasure and prestige to buy time for the South Vietnamese to face alone what had to be faced. In the last year of the 60s, the troops of the United States were leaving behind trained and equipped South Vietnamese to defend their destiny. For the guns of the North within the South were not silent. Though the decade was done, the struggle of the South Vietnamese to be free was still unfinished. 